What's up, everybody? This is Clint Lamb of Bama Insider. Please get this video to 500 likes and let us know what you think about the Alabama-Texas game coming up on Saturday. So what we're going to be talking about today are the five Alabama players that you need to be looking out for or watching on Saturday against Texas. Now, the first player we're going to talk about is linebacker Henry To'o To'o. And the reason that I think he's so important is because I think Texas is going to try to establish a run game, not only early, but often for two different reasons. Number one, it'll help keep Alabama's offense off the field. But equally as important, I also think that it can take a lot of pressure off of Quinn Ewers in the passing game. So that's why I think a player like Henry To'o To'o is so important. Not only is he the field general of your defense and you're going to be playing on the road, but also he's going to be a key factor in slowing down or stopping Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson, two very impressive running backs. Robinson in particular is a very interesting player. He's got great vision. He can make defenders miss or he can run with power. On top of being a really good runner, he's also an excellent receiver out of the backfield. There just aren't a whole lot of weaknesses to his game. This is one of the premier running backs in college football. If he's not the best, he's certainly one of the best. And Henry Toto is going to be key in slowing this guy down. Really, we should be talking about Jalen Moody and Deontay Lawson as well, because those guys on top of Henry Toto are also going to play an important role in slowing down Jatavian Sanders. Against Louisiana Monroe, this is a guy who led Texas in catches, yards, and he also scored a touchdown. He's a 6'4", 242-pound tight end who can create mismatch problems for Alabama's defense. A lot of people thought that it would actually be Jalil Billingsley who was providing that mismatch problem, but not only is he suspended, but he also might have lost his job to Sanders. He was actually the highest signed recruit for Texas in 2021 as a five-star prospect who ranked number 12 overall in the country and is the number one athlete. With Deontay Lawson's length, I could actually see him playing a little bit more in this game, depending on how Alabama wants to cover a guy like Sanders. You might see some DeMarco Hellams. You might see some Jordan Battle. You'll certainly see some Brian Branch and maybe some Malachi Moore. But if a linebacker ends up covering a tight end, you want it to be a guy who can match not only the size of Sanders, but also the athleticism. The next player on the list is going to be outside linebacker Chris Braswell. And the main thing that I want to see with this guy is how is he deployed after his week one usage? Last week, we saw Braswell play a career-high 45 snaps, and he actually looked pretty good. He only had three tackles and a forced fumble, but he was a very effective player. And he actually rotated in with Will Anderson, which I thought was a very interesting development compared to last season when Anderson was playing over 90% of the snap share. Braswell is clearly a guy that the coaching staff trust, but I do want to continue to see him get used this way against better opponents. Really, I think the entire group of Alabama's exterior pass rushers can cause this Texas offensive line some trouble. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that this group is going to be very good in the next couple of years, but right now they have two first-year players starting along their offensive line, including Kelvin Banks and Cole Hudson. Plus, they have two sophomores who are also starting. It's a very young group, and I think that Alabama can take advantage of that. But while I'm wanting to monitor Will Anderson and Dallas Turner as well, Chris Braswell is the main one that I'm going to be keeping my eye on come Saturday. The next player on the list is going to be starting center Darian Dalcourt. This is a guy who earlier on Monday was named SEC Co-Offensive Lineman of the Week for his performance against Utah State on Saturday. He didn't allow a sack or a pressure throughout the entire game. Now, a lot of people, myself included, originally thought that it was going to be Seth McLaughlin who ended up being Alabama's starting center. That ended up not being the case, and I think we now understand why. People need to remember, Darian Dalcourt, while he did struggle at times with snaps last season, a lot of his ineffective play was the result of him struggling with injuries throughout the year. But while he did an excellent job of communicating with the other offensive linemen and helped Alabama's offensive line overcome a very creative, disruptive Utah State defensive line, he'll have his work cut out for him on Saturday against Texas. And really, you could say that about the entire interior of Alabama's offensive line, including the left guard with Kendall Randolph and right guard with Emil Ikior Jr., Keandre Coburn is a big-body interior defensive lineman for Texas, who I originally thought was a one-dimensional guy and would really only be playing on early downs at 6'2", 344 pounds. But against Louisiana Monroe in Week 1, he totaled three pressures, including two hurries and one quarterback sack. That matched his entire season total from 2021. With him only being 6'2", he's got natural leverage, but he does tend to stand up too much when he's trying to rush the passer. At the same time, he requires a double team due to his weight and low center of gravity, and he anchors well and sheds blocks with authority. But to me, the best interior defensive lineman for Texas is Byron Murphy, who's technically listed as his backup. Not only is he considered the most consistent interior defensive lineman for Texas, but he might be the team's best overall defender. Damarian Overshone would probably have something to say about that. 
but Murphy is a very good player. And while Coburn is more of that big-bodied, space-eating nose tackle, Murphy is more of a penetrator with an extremely high motor. He's very disruptive and can create a lot of negative plays. Plus, you've got Moro Ojumo, who is also a very good interior defensive lineman. This past week, Alabama struggled to create any sort of consistent movement in the run game. And while that is somewhat understandable against Utah State's very aggressive defensive front, I do think that Alabama will need to go on the road and be a lot more consistent in that area. And really, that's all going to start with Darian Dalcourt and his play. That's why I think he could be a huge factor in this football game. The next player on this list is actually not a player at all. It's a position, and that's cornerback. Even without Western Michigan transfer Isaiah Nayer at wide receiver, we know that Texas is going to have some playmakers in the passing game. Xavier Worthy, despite the fact that he's only 6'1", 164 pounds, is one of college football's best young receivers. He's typically used on the perimeter, but he does get used some in the slot as well. They like to move him around. Last week against Louisiana Monroe, he led the team in targets with seven, but he only had two receptions. On Saturday, I could see Texas wanting that to change. The Warhawks gave their cornerbacks plenty of safety help over the top, but we know Alabama usually likes to leave its cornerbacks on islands. That's going to present some one-on-one matchups that I think Texas is going to try to exploit. Now, not having Isaiah Nayer is going to be a big loss for the Longhorns. This is a big-body guy at 6'3", 213 pounds, who also provided a vertical element for that Texas offense. He was a big play threat last season at Wyoming, averaging exactly 20 yards per catch, but he averaged 31 yards per catch in 2020. He has the speed to push vertically, which combined with his size would have made him a dangerous option, but he's not going to be available. You will see Jordan Whittington in the slot, but I'm more so talking about Alabama's perimeter cornerbacks. There's still an ongoing competition between Kool-Aid McKinstry, Tyrion Arnold, Eli Ricks, and Kyrie Jackson. I don't know if any of those guys necessarily separated themselves from the others against Utah State, so we're just going to have to wait and see how things are trending on Saturday. What we do know is that Texas is going to want to run the football, but if they get down or behind against Alabama, they're going to try to take some shots downfield, and Alabama's cornerbacks have to be ready. The last player on this list is going to be quarterback Bryce Young, who, for obvious reasons, is going to be a big part of whether or not Alabama has success on Saturday. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner carried over his impressive play from the 2021 season against Utah State in the season opener. He only threw for 195 yards, but he also threw for five touchdowns and added 100 yards on the ground with another touchdown. And the big reason why I think Bryce Young is such an important part of Alabama's game plan on Saturday is because if he's successful and helps Alabama put up a lot of points, that's going to take Texas out of their comfort zone of trying to run the football, and as a result, will put the game on Quinn Ewer's shoulders. I do think that Texas is a much improved defensive team, and the fact that they're going to have the home crowd at their backs is going to present a lot of challenges for Alabama's offense. But with a veteran, steady quarterback like Bryce Young at the helm, a guy who has proven that he can put pressure on you with his arm and his legs, I still believe that Alabama is still going to be able to have success against the Longhorns. Be sure to let us know in the comment box which Alabama players you'll be looking out for come Saturday.